Hello and welcome to MacLearn 360. So in this video, I want to solve some problem with you or a problem with you to illustrate the concept of oblique axis. So what do we mean by oblique axis? Oblique axis actually axis which are not perpendicular to each other. So you cannot use cosine or sine to resolve the forces. Let's look at a typical example over here. So the same problem but two um, parts. The first part is that we should resolve F1 into components along the U and V axis and um, determine the magnitude of these components. And the second part is to resolve F2 into components along the U and V axis and determine the magnitude of these components. So interestingly, we want to resolve the force F1 and F2. Mind you, so please take care, U and V are not perpendicular or what we call the rectangular component. So U and V are not perpendicular, so we cannot use sine or cosine. So if we cannot use sine or cosine, how then can we resolve it? And that is why we are going to look at it together. Okay, so let's say this is my U axis, and let's say this is my V axis, all right? So this is my V axis and this is my U axis. Now I have a force of 250 newtons, okay? So I have a force of 250 newtons over here. All right, okay, let's call it F1. We know it's 250 newtons. Now to resolve this force, what you have to do is to draw a parallelogram to contain the force, all right? So this is what we are going to do. The force is here. So we are going to draw a parallelogram of side U and then V. So this component of the parallelogram, we call it F1U, and this side we will call it F1V. Matter of fact, this represents the component of the force F1 along the U and V axis respectively. Now the angle here is 30 degrees, right? And um, okay, so all right, 250. Okay, so you know what? You cannot use sine theta cos theta. Okay, please, you cannot do that over here. Now, if you cannot do that, then what can we do? Okay, watch this. Can you see that there is an angle here which is 105? Um, so the angle over there is actually 105. It means that the, this, the angle from here to here is actually. 105 okay so let me do it well 105 all right but what do we know so we know that if we were to add the whole of this angle on a straight line it would have been 180 now from here to here is 105 from here to here is 30 so what might be this small one yes you are right yeah so you are right it's actually 180 so it's going to be 180 minus um, 30 plus 105 and that's going to give me what 45 so as a matter of fact this small angle over here um, is 45 okay so 45 degrees all right i hope the concept is clear now if this is 45 alternate angles are, are equal sorry so if this is 45, so in other words, you are saying that if F makes an angle with the V, then um, this F, which is the force again, will make 45 over here. Okay. So in other words, this actually, um, this angle is actually 45. Let me try to enlarge this. Okay. All right. So. Um, at this point, we need this angle over here. So we now know. So we now know that the angle here is 45. Okay. Then, if here is 30 and here is 45, what do you think will be here? So again, angle in a triangle is 180. So it's going to be 180 minus 30 plus 45. What is that? So interestingly, in fact, it means that this angle is also 105. 
Now, if you are very smart in trigonometry, you would see that there is actually a corresponding angle here. So if this F1U makes an angle 105 with the vertical, then F1U also makes 105 with the vertical. This is interesting, right? Okay, so how can I um, resolve it into component then? So using the sine rule, using the sine rule, what can I say? I can say that 250 divided by sine 105 is equal to what? F1U divided by what? Yeah, so F1U is OC2, uh, 45, right? This is also the same as what? So let me write it here. So I'm saying that using the sine rule, um, 250 divided by sine 105 is the same as F1U all divided by sine 45. And this is the same as F1V all divided by sine 30. Okay. So what then is F1U? F1U is 250 divided by sine 105 multiplied by sine 45. And then F1V is actually 250 divided by sine 105 multiplied by sine 30. So this is how we actually resolve something like this. So it's going to go at, um, for this one, so 250, 250 divided by sine 105 and uh, multiplied by sine 45, 183.01 Newton. So that is the component of F1 along the U. If I want the component along the V, so the same thing, but this time around, I'm going to multiply this by sine 30. What is that? 129.409, or let's say 129.41. So 129.41 Newton. All right. So I have been able to resolve this F1 force along U and V. So I'm going to use the same thing for the F2. Now you are going to see something interesting. I will not tell you, but you are going to see it for yourself. Okay. All right, so let's try to resolve F2 using the same approach. All right, now I have F2, so F2 will be in this direction, okay? So F2 is actually in this direction. Isn't it? So to resolve again, we are going to use the same thing. We are going to draw a parallelogram to contain the force. And the size of the parallelogram is going to be F2 along the U and then F2 along the V. Now watch this, it's very interesting. Watch this. You know, the angle over here is 35, uh, 30, right? This angle is 30. Right? Watch this. You know, vertically opposite angles are equal. So we expect that if here is 105, then whatever angle here must add up to 105, right? Vertically opposite angle. So what must be added over there to make it 105? So 105, 105 minus 30, right? That is 75. What this means is that this is 75. Is that not it? Now watch this carefully. Alternate angle. So if this is 75, so the vertical, then I said that over here too is going to work. 75, right? Okay. So what angle must be added over here? Can you guess it? Okay, let's see it for yourself. So 75 plus 30. Is 105. So it means that 180 minus 105. Ooh, it means that this is also 75. Is that not interesting? 
that this is really much interesting. And you are going to be shocked right now. So get ready. I'm going to shock you right now. Let's resolve it. Okay. Let's use the side rule for here. So using the side rule for this one is going to be what? So 150 divided by sine 75. You know, 150 and then 75. Oops, it's right. To be equal to F2U divided by what? Um, Sine 75, right? Don't forget that 150 is 75, FC is also 75. And then what? To be equal to F2 then all divided by um, sine 30, right? First of all, let's find F1, F2. Um, so let me bring it down. Okay, so if I want to solve for F2, U, F2, U would be what? 150 over sine 75 multiplied by sine 75. Now, this is interesting to know that F2, U itself is actually F2. This is, wow, this is interesting. You are resolving a force along a component and it is the same force itself. Is that not interesting? All right, now so that's what I wanted to show you. Now you've seen it, right? I'm sure it is also interesting to you. How can I resolve the force of the component and it is the same force? All right, now F2 V is what? So to solve for F2 V, F2 V is going to be what? Um, so F2 V is going to be. One fifty divided by sine seventy five, and then I'll multiply this by sine thirty. Okay. So what is the answer then? So F two V is going to be what? One fifty divided by sine seventy five, and then multiply by sine thirty. Right. To seventy seven point sixty four, seventy seven point sixty five. Okay, Newton. All right, so we've been able to resolve it. Now, what we have learned today is that not always that you are going to resolve using sine theta and cosine theta. So, this is a typical example of a question where you don't need sine theta and cosine theta. And most of the students, I'm, I'm sure they will go and use sine theta and cosine theta. So I think you have learned something new today. Kindly subscribe to our channel and like the video. And if you have learned something, comment in the um, comment section. Thank you, sir. All right. So thank you very much for watching this video.